This video presentation is on step up operation of single phase to single phase bridge type cyclo converter. In step up operation, the output frequency is greater than input frequency. So, FO will be greater than FS. Remember this. In step up operation, the frequency of output signal, output AC signal, is greater than frequency of input AC signal. In this type of cyclo converter, we have to employ forced commutation. Why it is required, we'll come to this later. Before moving further, let us recall what we learned in our last video. So this is the typical circuit of single phase to single phase bridge type cyclo converter. In this, we have AC source Vs the load and two group of thyristors P1, P and N, the positive group and the negative group. And recall the working of this cyclo converter. If positive output is required and supply is also positive, then P1 and P2 are active. To obtain negative output when positive supply is applied, available N1 and N2 are active. When positive output is required, when negative supply is available, then P3 and P4 are active. And last, for negative output, in case of availability of negative supply, N3 and N4 are active. So with knowledge of this firing we can have step up operation from this circuit. To understand what is step up operation and how we are going to proceed with firing of different thyristors, let us take an example where we have to obtain an output frequency which is twice the supply frequency. So this are, these are the waveforms of input and output. Mind you, this will be a just a representation of a type of output that is required from cyclo converter, step up type of cyclo converter, but this is not the actual output of base type cyclo converter. So, let us understand first how we have to proceed to switching schematic of step up operation in a single phase to single phase base type cyclo converter. To understand that, let us take an example where we have to obtain output frequency which is twice the supply frequency. So this is one cycle of input or supply. So if the output frequency is twice the supply frequency, it means that there have to be two cycles of output for one cycle of input. So each cycle of input will have two cycles of output. In that case, each half cycle of input will have one cycle of output. Each half cycle have one cycle of output. Each half cycle has one complete cycle of output. So to obtain one complete cycle of output, Within this half cycle of input, we have to perform two switchings because the supply goes from zero to positive, positive to negative. So there have to be two switchings. One switching will be of positive group P group so that output is positive and the next switching will be of N group or negative group to obtain negative output. So, in each half cycle, there will be two switchings between different thyristor groups. That is, this switching will not be between P group and P group or N group or N group. This switching will be between P group and N group. So, in complete cycle of the input, each cycle, there will be two times this switching. So there will be four switchings 
incomplete cycle of the input so one two three and four there will be four switches because output is positive negative positive negative in this duration so to obtain this output where there are two cycles of output we have to have four switchings and each switching will then occur at an interval of 90 degrees there are this is a complete cycle of input expanded over 2 pi radian or 360 degrees and to obtain two complete cycles of output we have to perform four switchings therefore each switching will occur after each 90 degrees as we have seen in this example now let us try to generalize these things so to obtain output which is n times the supply frequency there will be n cycles of output for each cycle of input there will be n by 2 cycles in each half cycle so similarly there will be n number of switchings in each half cycle and that too between different thyristor groups similarly in that analogy in each cycle we have to perform two times n switchings so if there are n switchings in each half cycles there will be twice that number in complete cycle and in that case switching will occur after every 360 divided by 2n degrees so let us recall all that we have learned about cycloconverters step up operation so this is the circuit there are two groups of thyristors p and n for step up operation output frequency must be greater than supply frequency and to obtain positive output p group are activated for negative output n group thyristors are activated when positive supply is required positive supply is available and positive output is required p1 and p2 are fired for negative output n1 and n2 are fired when negative supply is available for positive output p3 and p4 are fired and for negative output n3 and n4 are fired so we have a very good knowledge that to obtain a particular output for availability of a particular supply which set of thyristors must be fired then from the last example and an analogy from there we understand that to obtain an output frequency which is n times the supply frequency there has to be n switchings in each half cycle and those switchings which will occur after every 360 by 2n degrees so with this knowledge let us try to understand the actual operation of cycloconverter in step up mode let us take up our first example where output frequency is exactly twice the supply frequency so this is the circuit for single phase to single phase bridge type cycloconverter this is the table that represents that for particular type of output at particular supply which set of thyristor must be fired and these are the information which tell us how the switching must be done in order to perform step up operation so this is the supply with rms value vs a complete cycle of supply is uh, within the range of 0 to 2 pi radians or 0 to 360 degrees radians since the output across the load will also be negative of the supply voltage sometimes we draw the negative envelope as well minus vs supply now as discussed in last example uh, and also mentioned in this slide to obtain 
twice the supply frequency and output there will be four switchings in total and each switching will occur at an interval of 90 degrees therefore we have segregated four intervals for one cycle of input so the first interval is from 0 to pi by 2 radians 0 to pi by 2 that is 0 to 90 degrees then pi by 2 to pi radians 90 to 180 degrees next interval is from 180 to 270 degrees and last interval is from 270 degrees to 360 degrees now we have to obtain two cycles of output so the output must go positive vs first time then it must go to negative then it should bounce back to positive and it should reach negative again to complete two cycles right so output will be positive negative positive negative then only we can obtain two cycles of output for one cycle of input now we already know that in the first interval that is from 0 to pi by 2 radian supply is positive and output require is positive so when the supply is positive output is also positive the thyristors p1 and p2 must be fired similarly in second interval from 90 to 180 degrees the supply is still positive but output required is negative therefore thyristors n1 and n2 must be fired so in similar manner we can have the firing sequence like this in first interval 0 to pi by 2 radian p1 and p2 to obtain positive output then n1 and n2 in next 90 degrees to obtain negative output that is from pi by 2 to pi radians in third interval that is from pi to 3 pi by 2 or 180 degrees to 270 degrees we have to again obtain positive output therefore p3 and p4 are fired and in the last interval n3 and n4 are fired how let us take the case of first interval so in first interval as we have already decided that we must obtain positive output and the supply is positive so according to this table thyristors p1 and p2 must be fired when p1 and p2 are fired the current flows through the devices and load as marked by these arrows therefore output is positive the output is now shown in this dark green line which is equal to vs so in this interval 0 to 90 degrees output voltage v naught is equal to plus vs so the output is like this in next interval the output must be negative if output is negative and the supply is positive n1 and n2 thyristors must be fired so now n1 and n2 thyristors are active in the interval pi by 2 to pi radians now you can see that positive terminal of the supply is connected to negative terminal of the load through this thyristors n1 this means the output is negative and it is drawn like this so we have seen in one half cycle this is one half cycle of the supply there are one cycle of output in each half cycle there will be one cycle of output this is one cycle of output positive and then negative there are two switchings in each half cycle two switchings first p1 and p2 were fired and then n1 and n2 were fired and in that case 
each switching occurs after each interval of 90 degrees so first the interval was from 0 to pi by 2 radians on 90 degrees and after that 90 degree interval n1 and n2 were fired now at pi radian we have to switch again now in this interval to obtain another cycle of output the output must go to positive value so to obtain positive output and we already know that in this duration after 180 degrees the supply vs has reversed so in this duration supply is negative but output has to be obtained positive so we fire p3 and p4 as soon as p3 and p4 are fired the current flows in the direction marked by these arrows so we can see the output is positive in this case so the output is shown like this and in the last interval we have to perform another switching and in this case to complete another cycle of output we have to obtain negative output since output is to be obtained a negative output is to be obtained and supply is also negative we fire thyristors n3 and n4 in that case recall from the last video output will be negative so in this way two cycles of output are obtained this is cycle number one and this is cycle number two so mind you there are two cycles of output for one cycle of input therefore the output frequency is twice the supply frequency so the summary for step up operation of cyclo converter when we have to obtain two times the supply frequency there will be two switchings in each half cycle a total number of four switchings and each switching will occur after an interval of 90 degrees so a complete cycle of input is divided into four intervals each of 90 degree and then alternatively thyristor groups are fired p1 p2 n1 n2 p3 p4 and n3 n4 mind you if we have to consider only one half cycle and we have to obtain a higher number of frequency then there will be number of switchings that will be repeated and we'll see that in next examples so this is the summary of output of step up cyclo converter where output frequency is twice the supply frequency there will be four switchings each at 90 degree intervals now let us take an example of another operation of step up cyclo converter where output frequency is three times the supply frequency since the output frequency is three times the supply frequency there will be three switchings in each half cycle of input and six switchings in total therefore the 360 degree interval of the supply of the input must be divided into six sub intervals and there will be six switchings each at an interval of 60 degrees so we have divided one cycle of the input into six sub intervals each of 60 degree duration first is from 0 to 60 degrees then 60 to 120 degrees 120 to 180 degrees 180 to 240 degrees 240 to 300 degrees and 300 to 360 degrees we have to obtain three times the out supply three times the supply three times the input so there will be three cycles 
since there are three cycles there will be six switchings so switchings will be like this first way output must be positive then negative positive negative again positive and negative so as to obtain one two and three cycles of output for one cycle of input and according to the same working as we have seen in the last example the devices will be fired in this particular manner so the output will look like this and the firing sequence is like this let us take the first half cycle only in this first half cycle the supply will be positive from 0 to 180 degrees the supply will be positive and in this duration we have to obtain 1.5 cycles of output so there are two positive cycles of output or two positive parts of output and one negative part so whenever we have to obtain positive output for positive supply p1 and p2 are fired so the sequence is p1 p2 n1 n2 because negative output is required and then p1 and p2 again so the sequence is p1 and p2 n1 and n2 and again p1 and p2 again because output required is positive negative and positive and in this duration the supply is positive as the supply reverses after 180 degrees we have to move back to 3 and 4 remember this whenever supply is positive to obtain output the thyristor marked numbered 1 and 2 are fired for positive p groups for negative output n group whenever negative supply is there we have to fire thyristors with number 3 and 4 for positive output p3 p4 for negative output n3 n4 so in negative half cycle of the supply we again have to obtain 1.5 cycles of output since in the duration 120 degree to 180 degree positive output was obtained to complete one cycle of the output after 180 degrees to 240 degrees the output must be negative so we fire the thyristor group n3 and n4 first then we have to obtain positive output for negative supply we fire p3 and p4 and in the last interval to obtain negative output for negative supply we fire n3 and n4 so to summarize for three times output frequency there are six switchings each at an interval of 60 degrees and the firing sequence will be like this for positive half cycle group marked a thyristors marked one and two are fired for negative half cycle thyristors mark three and four are fired for positive p groups are fired for negative output n groups are fired so three times the output three times the input supply frequency six switchings each at 60 degree interval firing sequences p1 p2 n1 n2 p1 p2 n3 n4 p3 p4 and n3 n4 so this is the output similarly for obtaining four times the supply frequency that is the output is four times the input we will have total number of switchings as eight for four times the input there will be four switching in each half supply half cycle one two three four and eight switchings in total and each at an interval of 360 degrees divided by 8 that is 45 degrees so we have divided one cycle of input this is one cycle of input for four times the input frequency to obtain output as four times the input frequency there are four 
switchings in half cycle, eight switchings in each complete cycle in eight intervals. And each switching will occur at 360 degree divided by eight, that is 45 degrees. So firing sequence is like this. There will be two cycles in each half cycle. Therefore, P1, P2, N1, N2, P1, P2, and N1, N2. In negative half cycle, P3, P4, N3, N4, P3, P4, N3, N4. So there are 1, 2, 3, and 4 cycles of output for 1 cycle of input so that is step up operation of cyclo converter and last example is for where we have to obtain output frequency which is six times the supply frequency since output is six times supply frequency or the input frequency there will be six switchings in each half cycle this is one half cycle positive half cycle there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 switchings. In total, for one complete cycle of supply, there will be 6 into 2, 12 switchings. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 switchings. And each switching will occur at an interval of 360 degrees divided by 12 that is 30 degrees so to obtain six times the input frequency 12 switchings divided uh, at an interval of 30 degrees and the output is like this so there are one two three four five and six cycles of the output in next video we'll discuss the step down operation of cycloconverter. Thank you.